Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back. And I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. Today I'm gonna to show you all how to make a fried barbecue chicken sandwich. Listen here, this chicken sandwich is gonna be packed with flavor. It's gonna be crispy and golden brown on the outside, nice and juicy on the inside. And listen here, this recipe is so simple. It does not require a lot of ingredients. And listen here, it's gonna taste so good if you make it Jeannie Young style. Here's what you'll need to make Jeannie Young style fry barbecue chicken sandwich. You all never had this before, baby. You better make you some. That's right, everyone. You better make you some. So here's what you're gonna need. I thought it would be a great idea to use the breast and to also do it with thighs as well. You can use any piece of the chicken that you would like to use. You know, a lot of people, when they think chicken sandwich, they automatically gravitate towards the breast. But if you're that person that likes the thigh, why not fry up some chicken thighs and make that into a sandwich as well and see which one you like the best, okay? Because I don't know about you, but I am a sucker for chicken thighs. Chicken thighs are always juicy and they're always amazing. Chicken breasts are amazing as well, but I gravitate a little bit more to the chicken thigh. So we're gonna make them both and see which one does Gina like most. So what I've done, I've taken the bone off of the breast. This right here was one breast, it was a large breast. I've taken the bone off, I've taken the skin off, I've cleaned my chicken with lime juice, a little bit of salt and cold water, and I've pat dry my beautiful chicken. This one chicken breast, you can see that I cut it in half. Okay, so here are the ingredients that we're going to use. I have some amazing potato sandwich buns. And you better believe we're gonna toast those bad boys with a little bit of butter on them. I have some beautiful cheese here. You use your favorite cheese, any cheese that you like. Hot pepper cheese, American cheese, Kobe Jack, whatever your favorite cheese is, that's the cheese that you use. When you, make, when you all make these recipes, put what ingredients you like so that you can enjoy the recipe as well. You're gonna grab your favorite barbecue sauce and if you're that person that wants to make yours then by all means make your barbecue sauce we're going to use some ranch and i'm going to show you how we're going to use this you will need flour and corn starch you're going to need a couple eggs salt pepper and chicken seasoning and right here in this bowl i have a little bit of cold milk it doesn't matter what kind of milk you use, whatever kind of milk you have at the house. You know, you don't want to use any sweet milks. And you also can use buttermilk. Buttermilk would be amazing as well. So the first thing that we want to do, make sure your hands are impeccably clean and let's season up this chicken. You never want to season your chicken and throw it in that frying pan right away. Give your chicken some time to absorb the beautiful seasonings. Let those seasonings marry with the protein, okay? And then another thing, you never wanna take your meat directly out of the refrigerator, get it you know, seasoned up and floured up and throw it straight into your pan. Let this meat rest a little. Let some of that chill come off of your meat so that it doesn't seize up when it hits that hot frying pan, okay? Because when that happens, you'll wind up with the dry meat. And we're not cooking any dry meats in any of these kitchens, all right? So let's get started. So I have some milk here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to crack some of these eggs where well, we're going to crack three eggs into our milk just like so i'm going to crack the eggs in a separate bowl because if you were to get a bad egg you would have to throw all of your milk away or if you were to get an eggshell it's easier to take the eggshell out of this rather than try to search for it in here so we're going to crack our egg into a separate bowl just like so now, if you wanted to, 
if you're a person that loves the heat, there is a eggshell. I'm gonna take that baby out of there. You see what I mean? That eggshell could have easily went into the milk and then I would have had to throw the whole mixture away. <laughs> um, some of you that like heat, now would be the time to take some hot sauce and you're gonna pour it into your milk and egg mixture. It's gonna give you an amazing taste. You can also season your egg and milk if you'd like. We're gonna give this a nice whisk. You can use a whisk or a fork. Just get it well incorporated. And don't forget, like I said, by all means you can use buttermilk as well in replace of the milk. This milk, honestly, I feel like when you dredge your chicken in the milk, it makes your chicken nice and tender. It gives it somewhat of a beautiful tang. Really, I believe that. Especially using the buttermilk. Okay, make sure that you incorporate your eggs really well. Just like so. Okay, I'm gonna put some chicken seasoning in with my milk and eggs. Oh yeah. A little bit of cracked black pepper. Beautiful. Then we're gonna whisk it up just like this. It's gonna make it nice and flavorful. Now what you wanna do is we're going to season up our meat that we've washed. We're gonna use cracked black pepper, and we're gonna season both sides, okay? Okay, we're putting the black pepper on, and then we'll use a fork to flip the chicken over. That way I don't have to rewash my hands again. Now I'm not gonna put chicken seasoning on my chicken. If you want to, you can. But I feel like the chicken seasoning that we put into the egg and milk mixture is enough. All right, I'm gonna salt my chicken. Just like so, beautiful. Don't use too much salt, everybody. If you all are that person that's afraid to season your meat, then your food will have no seasoning and that won't be good, or your food will have no flavor. That's what I meant to say. Don't be afraid to season, okay? Beautiful. You wanna feed your family members and loved ones beautifully seasoned food. <laughs> Not bland food, guys, come on. All right, just like so. Beautiful. There we go. And then we're gonna put cracked black pepper on, and we're gonna let these seasonings soak into this beautiful meat for around about 12 minutes. I hope that you all are having a great day today, as well as a great work week. The weekend is here. Is everybody excited to be off and, you know, to do fun things for the weekend? I know I am. Definitely I am. So now over at the stove, I'm using my wok and I have filled it up with oil. Let's make our way over to the oil and we wanna check on it and see if it's nice and hot. My oil is not hot yet. What I wanna do is I wanna take some of this flour you can use, um, all-purpose flour. You can use self-rising. Either one you use would be just fine. You know, that's a question that you all ask me a lot. What kind of flour do I have to use, Gina? Use whatever kind you like, okay? You know, honestly, I find when I use self-rising or all-purpose, it really doesn't make a difference. You know, and some of you might think it does make a difference, but to me, it doesn't. I'm gonna put some cornstarch in, just like so. I'm not gonna measure it, all right? You can measure it if you like. You can use one third cup of cornstarch for two cups of flour, okay? I know how much I need, so I just kind of eyeball it, all right? Two cups of flour and one third cup of cornstarch. Get it well incorporated, just like so. This is gonna give you a nice, airy, crispy crust, okay?
beautiful golden brown crust. I want to whisk it really well and get that well incorporated. I am so excited and my mouth is already watering for this fried chicken sandwich. Not to mention, we're gonna barbecue this sandwich. Hooey, but we gotta fry it up first. There's nothing like a fried chicken sandwich and then you dunk it in your favorite barbecue sauce and then we're gonna put it on the beautiful buttery bun, baby. Whoo, listen here, you girl. I'm not playing in this kitchen. When I get in this kitchen, I'm not playing any games, you hear me? All games aside. Now here's what we want to do. We have, um, we want to let the chicken set for at least 10 minutes and then I'll come back. Okay everyone, so one thing you need to know about your barbecue sauce. If we're going to barbecue this chicken, you never just want to pour the cold barbecue sauce on your nice, hot, beautiful chicken. Take the time out. Put your barbecue sauce in a dish, in a microwave safe dish. Heat it up, or you can do as I'm doing, just like so. I'm gonna put it in a pan and just heat it up. I'm just gonna turn it on simmer and let it simmer for a while while the cooking, while the cooking fries, <laughs> while the chicken fries. Okay, you want this to be nice and hot. Never dip your hot food into cold sauce. Always heat it up. Let's go check on our oil and see if it's nice and hot. My oil is nice and hot. And the way that I like to check my oil is I take a little bit of flour between my two fingers and I just do like this, put a little bit of flour in my oil. And literally, listen here guys, literally, the, the uh, flour will, will sizzle up right away. And so once you put it in, you'll see the flour doing this, right? It'll bubble and sizzle right away if that oil is nice and hot. But if you take it and you put it in there and you see it go like this and you see it drop all the way to the bottom of your oil, guess what? Your oil's not hot enough. Don't put anything in there. That's how I like to tell if my oil is 350 degrees. It always works for me. And then a lot of people like to say, you can use the back of a wooden spoon. Put the back, you know, put the, the handle part in the bottom of the oil, and this works as well. And you see those bubbles all around that spoon? Your oil's nice and hot. So let's get to dredging. Here's what I like to do. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take your chicken. We want to dredge it in the flour, just like so, just a nice thin dredge. Shake that excess off, okay? That's really important. Dip it into your egg and milk mixture, back into the flour, and voila. Okay, but when we put it back into the flour, you really want to pat that beautiful flour onto your chicken and just set it aside. Okay, so we're gonna do this one, same thing. Get it in the mixture, put it in your flour, pack it on, baby. Okay, that's pretty simple, right? It's so simple, the kids can do this part for you. But you make sure their hands are impeccably clean before they start and impeccably clean before they leave your kitchen. Okay? Just like this. That's pretty simple. There are some people that like to dredge it two times, but I'm okay with that. This right here is what works for me. So then we'll do the thighs just like so. I am so excited to share with you all this recipe. Normally when I make my chicken sandwiches this way, I always use the chicken breast. So now we're gonna try the chicken thighs and I know it's gonna be amazing, right? Like you just know it's gonna be amazing. Shake that excess off, go into your milk mixture and your egg, let some of that drain off back into the flour and coat that baby like you know how, just like this. Okay, I'm gonna do the last one off camera and I'll be right back and we'll be ready to throw these bad boys right into that hot grease. Okay, everyone, so our oil is nice and hot. Let me show you my little flour trick. Sizzle it right away, perfect. All right, you take your chicken, you see how I like to shake it off. The reason for shaking it off before it goes in the pan is you don't want that extra flour on 
your chicken falling to the bottom and burning in the oil. And those of you that like to save the oil and use it for later, you'll have a burnt oil taste because you have so much burnt flour in the bottom of your pan. So take that extra step to shake the extra off. Just like this. Be really careful when you're lowering the chicken down into the oil. You don't have to be afraid of the oil. I know a lot of you like to grab the chicken, throw it in and just run as fast as you can and then come back and make sure the coast is clear. That's not the way to do it. Be careful, you don't wanna get that oil all over your stove and possibly start a fire or burn yourself. Just kinda of ease it down and right before your finger gets too close, just let go and it's okay, no splashes, you know? And then I'm going to sanitize this counter right here. I'm going to sanitize my sink and my counter while this chicken cooks and I'll be right back. Make sure that you all cook your chicken on a medium high heat. Those of you that have an electric range, put it on five, five and a half. If you have a gas range, you all know what medium high flame looks like, right? Okay, so I have my sauce over here just simmering on a low heat. And now a lot of you ask me, Gina, how do you sanitize your counters and your sink? Well, what I like to do, I use bleach, I use Dawn dishwashing liquid, and I use Lysol. Sometimes I use Pine Sol, but I find using those three things gets everything nice and squeaky clean. Absolutely, and I do it no matter what meats I'm cooking, no matter what I'm cooking, my kitchen always gets sanitized from top to bottom daily. Absolutely. Okay, everyone, our chicken is cooking up just beautifully. Naturally, you're gonna want to go in with the spatula or your fork picking at it. Don't bother it, okay? And the reason why is because you don't wanna take off that beautiful crust that's forming on your chicken right now that you work so hard for. If you go in right now, all of that crust will fall off, okay? So don't bother it. You'll start to see golden brown. You will see golden brown color when, you know, when it's time for you to touch it, when it's okay for you to touch it. And we don't wanna take this out until it's that beautiful golden brown color that we all love. Okay, everyone, what I like to do Let's go ahead and very, very, very lightly butter your buns. You cannot have buns that have not been toasted if you want a beautiful sandwich. You must take the effort to toast your buns. Now, you don't have to use butter. You can toast your buns without butter. You can even toast your buns with olive oil, okay? And you're just gonna turn it like onto a medium, medium high heat. And literally within one to two minutes, they'll be nice, beautiful, and golden brown. Okay, it doesn't take a lot. Okay, everyone, you can see that I put the buns in the pan, you know, butter side down. I'm gonna keep a good eye on those bad boys because I don't want them to burn. And right now at this point, it's okay for me to touch them now, okay? And I see that they're starting to form that beautiful crust that we all love. Looks a little flaky. Hooey! Oh my goodness, my house smells absolutely amazing. Just be sure not to turn this up too high. Okay, everyone, someone had asked me, Gina, how come when you fry chicken, you use so much oil? Honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. When I, let me check my buns. Oh my gosh, I caught them right in time. <laughs> Good thinking, Gina. Okay, so getting back to how much oil I use and why. The reason why I like to use a nice amount of oil is because throughout the years, me personally, I find that cooking my chicken in a nice amount of oil gives my chicken enough room so that it can actually float away from the bottom. So if this is the chicken right here in the middle, this is the bottom of the pan and this is the top. <laughs> I can't move my fingers. But, um, so if this is the chicken, once that chicken goes down, 
it needs room. I feel like it needs room to start floating up. If you don't have the oil in there, it can't float up. So if you don't have enough oil, it's going to stay at the bottom. And guess what you're going to get? You're going to get some really, really, really dark, almost burnt looking chicken. At least that's what I've experienced. So I put a lot of oil in my pan so my chicken has enough room so it can rise and it doesn't have to sit right here at the bottom of that hot pan. Okay? Does it make any sense? But that's why I do that. And what I do with my leftover oil, you all ask me so much. I have a pan. I have a big pan that has a really tight lid. I have, I, with leftover grease, I keep it in there. And what I do, once the um, oil cools down, I take a strainer and I strain all of the little pieces that are in the bottom out. And then I save the oil and then I reuse it. How long do you save your oil? I save it up to a couple weeks, maybe three weeks to a month. And then that's it, and then I get rid of it. But that pan that I'm speaking about, it has a really tight lid, and then I also put some foil on it really tight, just like this, and then I put that lid on it, and it's nice and safe. And I put it in a cupboard, in a nice cool cupboard, where there's nothing in the cupboard except for my pan of oil. Okay, so that's what I do, guys. You all ask me that question almost every day. Question is answered. Beautiful. My chicken's starting to get nice, beautiful, and golden brown. Hoo-wee, look at that. Girl, you better make you some. Okay, everyone, here's what I like to do with the ranch dressing. You can use any dipping sauce that you would like to use. If you love ranch like my family does, try it with the ranch, it's amazing. And it's so interesting how the ranch pairs up just beautifully with the barbecue sauce. Here's what I like to do. I'm going to take, sorry guys, I'm going to take the cheese and I put it at the bottom. And I always like to put my cheese at the bottom a lot because it prevents your bread from getting soggy. You know, I feel like the worst thing in the world is to bite down into a sandwich and you got soggy buns. I don't like soggy buns. How about you guys? No soggy buns over here. So then here's what I'm gonna do. I need to open this cap all the way and I'll show you what I like to do with the ranch. Now that we're gonna now that I've got that open, I struggled to get that open. Let's put some ranch, but not too much. Listen here, just enough to be able to taste it, okay? You don't want your chicken to go slipping and sliding on this bun, right? Don't put too much. We're not trying to make ranch flavored chicken. We barely want to be able to taste it. We want to be able to taste that zing up against that barbecue sauce, okay? If you're that person that just wants to douse it on, then by all means, it's your sandwich, <laughs> okay? Try this with hot pepper cheese as well. The cheese that I'm using today is a white American that I absolutely adore. Okay, everybody, take a look at this beautiful chicken. My chicken cooked for 23 minutes is beautiful, it's crispy, it's golden brown, baby. Look at it, whoo-wee, girl. Mm -hmm. Now you can see that I put the chicken always on the cooling rack because you don't want your chicken to get soggy. The cooling rack, I explain it every day, it allows air to circulate around the chicken so that the bottom of your chicken doesn't have to get mushy, okay? I'm only going to barbecue two of them because I'm only making two barbecue sandwiches right now. We don't have to barbecue all of them. Some people might want to eat theirs this way, you know, and then there's the option to dip it in the barbecue sauce if they like, but have that barbecue sauce ready and nice and hot. So now, we're gonna take a thigh. Who we will take a thigh, baby. Who you take that thigh? Let's take this one right here. It's beautiful. You put it right down there. Oh, my, ma <laughs> my mouth is salivating, guys. Oh, baby. Who, mommy? Hold on, guys. That's really hot. Hold on. Of course it's hot, Gina. <laughs> All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it here just so I can let any excess drip off, okay? You don't want it too, too, too 
sloppy, okay? There's that. And then we're gonna take one of these beautiful breasts. And you can see this one that I kind of poked it a little bit just to make sure it's done. You know, even me, sometimes if I'm unsure, I'll poke it just a little tiny bit just to make sure it's done, you know? Oh, baby, look at that. Take a bite right there. Woo, girl! And then you dip it. Just a nice, easy dip. Not too much. I don't want it drowning in sauce. Okay, I'm gonna let any excess sauce drip off. And then we're gonna make our sandwiches. We have our nice hot buns, not soggy. We have that henna ranch and your favorite cheese at the bottom. If you all enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Jeannie Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know all about Jeannie Young and tell them what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. This is Jeannie Young style fried barbecue chicken sandwich, baby. If you all never had this before, you better make you some. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Hoo -wee. And you know what? What even go on there? Pickles. I'm not gonna do the pickle on top, but I am gonna do some nice, beautiful, fresh pickles right there on the side. Oh, it doesn't get any better than this, right? Make sure you all give me a thumbs up. If you all enjoy the videos, give me thumbs up. Let the world know that you're enjoying Gina Young's videos. And if you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm so serious. And I appreciate you all. And I thank you so much for watching and tuning in and subscribing. Let's go ahead and say a beautiful prayer. Our chicken has had enough time to cool down so I don't burn the daylights out of my mouth. Let's say a prayer so we can dive right in. And of course, I'm gonna give you all that first bite. You can see where that cheese is starting to melt. ooh -wee. And that ranch is starting to warm up just a little bit. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your love, time, and your understanding. We need you in our hearts, Lord. We can't do anything in life without you. Send your angels down to surround us day and night. Your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions and give us peace over our mind, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, I thank you for blessing my marriage in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for blessing my children and keeping them safe daily. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the joy, and the peace that you bring us, Lord. We thank you. Amen once again for this beautiful meal. Let's dive in. Oh, look at this. Are you a smasher, guys? Do you all like to smash your sandwich? <laughs> or do you like to just eat it this way and go ham? <laughs> I kind of like to smash mine just a bit. Not too much, just a little bit goes a long way. Look at that. Oh, baby. Hoo -wee. All right, I'm going in. Which one do y'all want to taste first? This one right here is the breast. Oh, look at that breast. Mm. A breast didn't look any more better than that. Mmm. And look at that thigh. You got some thighs on you. Look at that baby right there. Mm. I think the first one that I want to try, I want to try my traditional breast. Because when I make this, I always make the breast. Like I said, the newbie here, the newbie here in town is that chicken thigh. What is the chicken thigh going to taste like fried and barbecued? Let's try this one. Let me know what y'all think. Mmm, 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 that sauce. Oh, God, that sauce is good. Bite right there. Let me know what you think about this. Mmm. 
Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Listen here. That buttered bun, that well-seasoned chicken is so moist in the inside. It's so crispy on the outside. The cheese gives it the beautiful note. And not to mention the barbecue sauce and that little bit of tank from that ranch. Listen here. You got a match made in heaven when Gina Young makes this sandwich here. Let's take one more bite. You have to. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I just, I just love it. Ooh. Mm. Man, that thing is good. Mm. Take a nice bite, guys. Take a big bite of that pickle. Everybody loves a nice pickle, right? Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. That pickle really cleanses the palate. Mm. Now we're going to try that beautiful chicken thigh. Dive in, guys. Ooh, take a big bite. I'm going in right now. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> mm, mommy. Oh! Mmm. Ooh, this is like... Mmm. This is like love on a bun. You hear me? I'm going to be so honest with you guys. I cannot. Hold on, guys. Okay, everybody. Sorry about the call. You see what happens when I'm doing my videos? They call and they say, baby, when is the food ready? Or mommy, when is the food ready? <laughs> All right. So like I said about this one, this one right here is just pure love on a bun. But can I decide? Can Gina Young decide which one is the best? I can't. But here's what I want you all to do. Because they're both delicious. You hear me? What I want you all to do is you make it. Make it this weekend. Make it for your family and friends and your loved ones. And you let me know which one you all like the best. Make sure to give Gina Young a thumbs up. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night.